Good afternoon. Good day. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Pretty well, and you? Pretty good. Can you hear the music and my mic by chance? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I like your spectacle selection today, too. Oh, why, thank you. Is there, is there some snow there that those go with? Um, I'm just trying to trying to get the snow to come with these glasses, yeah. I love the snow until about March. Then it, it's about time for it to go, but I love it. Now there was noise, and now, and now it's just blank. You can hear the music, though. I could. You, now you, I just hear, like, like noise, like white noise kind of in the background. With, with no music at all? With no music. Oh. Yeah. And now it's just blank, like no noise. Interesting. Okay. Now there's the noise, but no music. Yeah, my mic is being really noisy right now, and I can't seem to fix it in this space I'm in right now. So I might have to work on that, but maybe it's the universe saying just, you don't need to talk, Dave. It's really hard to draw with these things. Not that I'm any good at drawing anyway. You still can't hear the music? Now I can. Excellent.
That is super noisy, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I love this. I'm going to download it. And then... The music disappears. Hello. <laughs> and I'll try to retrieve it with my... That was a nice song. Yeah, this is a good song, yeah. Almost as good as... Oh, this new band I've been listening to. A really good band called Zip Zap Zap. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Man. <laughs> Doesn't sound very good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Zip Zap Zap Zap. Uh, I think the drawing thing must have scared everyone else away, huh? I think it probably did, which is understandable. People, <laughs> and I, I get it. I was nervous myself, but it, <laughs> then every time I do it, I'm like, why am I nervous about doing that? It's like the most therapeutic thing I could ever do. Yeah, nice. I was, uh, and with the music, I was really kind of getting into it there. Yeah, I'll try to, try to like bring just it back. you know stay right in the zone, make yeah. my crooked awful rainbow <laughs> sorry i had to interrupt it i'm technologically a little uh challenged sometimes <laughs> you might say uh, why does it do that? Mm -hmm. did it come back it all right. Who are we listening to anyway? Um, I'm just, let's see, I'm pulling from a Apple uh, playlist called Pure Meditation. Mm. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry, it's just the two of us and then also uh, I'm glad it's just the two of us yeah um, there you go so I was gonna um, take two minutes and have us just write in the chat without mm -hmm. sending it um, yeah. um, um, a sentence or maybe two sentences or three or something um, whatever happens about the relationship between failure and success and then we can unmute and sh and send it to the chat and share what we wrote. Sound good? All right.
How we doing? We ready? You bet. All right, let's share. Oh wow, yours is nice and short. <laughs> Mathematical even. Ooh, um, you wanna expound on yours? Well. <clears throat> I'll read it aloud for anyone who may not be able to see or read it. <clears throat> when it comes to drawing, for me, there is only failure from most measures of success. However, if success can be found in the act of drawing itself, or the act of doing or not doing or saying or not saying most anything, success can persist from moment to moment. Failure is essentially a subjective construct. Even what is thought of as failure by 99.9999% of other humans may be success to one. That's my way of saying I'm really bad at drawing, but I did it. Yeah, and it's it's the doing it that is the success. Um, I, man, that's a lot of good stuff there. That, that last sentence I just want to hear a little bit more about. Um, so even what is thought of as failure by 99.9999% of other humans may be success to one. Can you say more about that? Well, um, <clears throat> you could think of it in the context of art, I suppose. Uh, for example, um, if I make a painting or something, um, well, I may have an example here. Let's see. There's an example. Okay. So here I have a painting that I made. By all measures, it is a failure by most measures in terms of uh, it's not going to make any money. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't do certain things. Uh, it's not in an art gallery or museum. Um, but wait, wait, wait. I, I got to stop you there, though. Why wouldn't that make money? Well, I don't know. Uh, um, but by I my mean, measure I would buy that I'm just saying <laughs> by my measure I had a really good time making it um and um so that to me was a success in that and and I don't mind looking at it um in fact I kind of like looking at it um but uh yeah I mean I guess that's just an example or like you could take music for an example too. Like you may make something, a painting, a piece of music or something. Maybe nobody else in the world actually likes it, but yourself. And that's actually completely fine. That that's kind of what I was saying, you know? Yeah. Which is really a so it's autobiographical. I like but it. This is a whole different take. Let's let's talk about yours for a minute now. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm wondering what success would even be, or if, if it could even be understood. I mean, obviously, it comes down to right our definitions of success and failure, and that is very subjective, like you're saying. Um, but no matter what the definitions are for any given person, um, I wonder if success and failure could even be understood at all without each other. That actually I completely agree with. And in fact, the first place my mind went 
when I saw what you said about today's session was yin and yang. That was the first image that popped up in my head. But then I reflected on it a little bit longer. And because I, I think that's true, it's a dichotomy of this thing can't exist without its opposite, right? Um, when you put learning into the fa- into the matter, and the idea of failure being a learning experience, and then iteration, an iterative process based on that, that can lead towards success or more failure, or more failure, and then maybe eventually success. But I love this statement: learning consumes failure and poops out success. That should probably be on a shirt. <clears throat> you know what? I'll make I'll make that shirt, and you know, on the front it'll say "Just Another Dave," and then on the back it'll say "Learning Consumes Failure and Poops Out Success." That'll be the maybe that should be the tagline of this whole podcast endeavor. Well, and what I thought about was. I think some people, I mean, obviously, probably in their lifetime, everybody experiences some amount of success and some amount of failure. But there are certainly people who are really lucky or people who are really privileged uh, and people who don't experience much failure, um, who seem to manage to make it through uh, with a very low degree of failure. Um, and that's what made me sort of question the yin and yang thing was like, like, I mean, but again, I think everybody experiences failure on some level, right? But, uh, and then, you know, it makes you want to be uh, empathetic for those who experience, in at least in, you know, again, it's all subjective, right? But failure in their own mind that may feel down about experiencing rejection experiencing not <clears throat> not achieving what they would like to achieve as a success in their own mind in their own life i've even heard it put like this that the and it really got me thinking a lot about this concept of failure where someone framed it in the context of failure being a privilege in and of itself, like the privileged have the resources and the capacity to experience lots of failure. Um, Whereas some people, you know, one little failure could cost them everything. And, um, So I'm trying to reframe failure as as an, as an asset and as something that's a privilege to <laughs> to be able to experience um, because it it's it's un, the most necessary ingredient ingredient for overall success probably maybe I don't know. Well, the, the sounds of my mic makes me realize my mic is failing and I need a mic like Dan Klein's, you know, that, that won't pop and snap like this one is. <laughs> it's funny how microphones are coming up in this uh, last episode. Uh, yeah. We had the, uh, the killer, the killer mic. Uh, and uh th- this episode we have the uh crackle mic uh, it's a real feature <laughs> indeed well and you know i'm i have zero sponsorships of course 
But I will say, and I, I, do, I don't fault this mic for the buzzing. I fault my cords and my, my electrical circuitry where I'm at. But this is the Shure MV5, and it's one of my favorites because it's so teeny tiny and yet uh, um, so powerful. <clears throat> yeah, you know, one of the things I've reflected on about success and failure that I've, I don't know, I probably heard the first time, I don't know, 15 years ago, or try to, it's difficult, is sort of the idea of, um, of equanimity. Um, so viewing with equanimity, so success and failure like a scale, right? But their equanimity is like in between. And to be able to view it objectively as, uh, uh, and, and, and then experience it as it is, not as you would like it to be. So just to, you know, to observe what is, and you could reflect on what you'd like it to be, but just to kind of uh, accept it and observe it for what it is with that equanimity scale without too much one side or too much to the other side uh, in terms of oh, oh, what well, matters. I really liked that you were cutting out on my end at the very end, but um, I, re I really like that, you know, like it, that's an important thing too, is to, so I have a profound <laughs> a psychological fear of failure, right, in my life, um, and um, we'll always come to terms with, be coming to terms with that probably, um, and um, but I'm, you know, and, and part of that is facing it and, and coming to, and allowing it to not wreck me emotionally when, whenever I do something wrong. Um, and observe it, just observe it and even be grateful for it. Um, and then similarly, when I have a success or I do something well or um, and not letting that emotionally hijack me uh, in terms of feeling like there's a rival. But again, back to your thing about drawing, um, finding the joy between the, the failure and the success and um, seeing what happens in that space. <laughs> couple other reflections on uh, uh, I think it's, you know afraid of failure or your uh, somebody had uh, encouraged my son to go uh, to fail it go do out there you know you're gonna feel like go to an ice cream shop and just ask for free ice cream you know or something like that just and then just feel the failure, feel it, experience it. And uh, I think one of the best things for me probably was when I lived in New York City and um, I uh, went out on all kinds of auditions for acting jobs. And so I got to experience more rejection in a short amount of time. Like I would go up to three to five auditions a day um and you couldn't possibly get all that you know um and uh and so i was just like you know you're doing 30 auditions for maybe one that you get you know um and that's what a great experience of uh rejection and failure um <laughs> on a daily basis yeah, that's a really great uh, experience to tap into there. And I think it's extremely common in the careers of those who go into acting. Um, I've never heard of an acting career that, you know, just resulted in 
one try out and the rest of their life was a profound success, right? That just doesn't happen. Man. And the Good. ones that I always thought, oh, I'm perfect for this. This is the perfect role. I would be perfect for this. Never. I'll never. Yeah, you know, kind of like not. I didn't really even think about it. Yeah, yeah, true that. Well, my internet is a bit unstable, so I'm going to conclude this wonderful conversation, as always, Clark. Um, yeah, I think if nothing else, people are going to come back over and over again and watch those first few minutes of music and us drawing on the screen. Because it's uh, On loop, it's a, for, you know, all day. Can you Most do it? people, yeah. Can you do a slowed down 10 hour version of that? <laughs> that is possible. <laughs> it's, funny care, you, it's funny that you say that because I've been watching at home in the mornings, <laughs> these beautiful on YouTube, a few different channels I subscribe to where they make, did I tell you this? They make like scenes in a cabin with snow or rain coming down and fire crackling and they're literally 10 to 12 hour videos and sometimes i joke with the boys in the morning saying you know what i i don't think we can make it to school today because we gotta finish this you know so. <laughs> nice <laughs> nice oh, man. all right man good to nice see you to see you talk Have to you a again lovely soon. week you too all right bye-bye